Spirit. Of uh, this Mass. You're very welcome. Glad that you're here on live streaming. Uh, today is actually the Feast of St. Boniface, but uh, it's also the exact anniversary of my ordination to the priesthood. I was ordained on Pentecost Sunday in 1960, but that was June the 5th, June the 5th. So as you know, we celebrated last Sunday and Pentecost Sunday, but we're also offering a Mass of Thanksgiving today, the actual day. And we'd like to remember in our Mass, of course, today, all of you, all sick people suffering from the pandemic, and especially for peace in our nation and throughout the world. Let's take a few moments now to call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, who by no merit of my own chose me for communion with the eternal priesthood of your Christ, and for the ministry of your church. Grant that I may be an ordinary and gentle preacher of the gospel and a faithful steward of your sacred mysteries. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. You have followed my teaching, way of life, purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, and sufferings, such as happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, persecutions that I endured. Yet from all these things, the Lord delivered me. In fact, all who want to live religiously in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But wicked people and charlatans will go from bad to worse, deceivers and deceived. But you remain faithful to what you have learned and believed because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. 
O Lord, Lord, great great peace peace have they who love your law. Through my persecutors and my foes are many, I turn not away from your decrees. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. Permanence is your word's chief trait. Each of your just ordinances is everlasting. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. Those who love your law have great peace, and for them there is no stumbling block. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. I wait for your salvation, O Lord, and your commands I fulfill. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. I keep your precepts and your decrees, for all my ways are before you. O Lord, great peace have they who love your law. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was teaching in the temple area, he said, how do the scribes claim that the Christ is the son of David? David himself inspired by the Holy Spirit said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I place your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how is he his son? The great crowd heard this with delight. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned, today is the actual date of... uh, my uh, 60th anniversary, a few people asked me during the week, where did all these priests go to? There were 36 of us ordained on the same morning. And uh, one stayed in Ireland, and the rest went overseas. A couple to Scotland, quite a number to Great Britain, especially Hexham and Newcastle and Manchester, the Doyces of Salford. A few went to New Zealand, a couple to Australia, and uh, the rest of them, I guess, came here to the United States. So uh, we, uh, we used to have a reunion uh, in years gone by, but not anymore. We had a reunion in San Antonio way back, and in Miami, and in Sacramento, and in San Diego. And everybody loved the reunion in San Diego. It was beautiful weather. But anyhow, it's always good to um, connect with your classmates. We were together in the seminary for six years. And there's a great bonding that takes place during uh, that time. Uh, I actually talked to one of my classmates last night. He's in Fort Lauderdale in uh, Florida. He is retired and like myself, he's helping in a parish. Michael Conway. So that was neat. We talked for quite a while. And the big thing that happened actually was Vatican II. Everything was in Latin the year I was ordained and the following year. Everything. And the priest set his back to the people. And then Vatican II came along and the key thing in Vatican II for me personally was Mass of the Vernacular. 
uh, opening up of the scriptures and uh, a whole number of new ministries, lectors, Eucharistic ministers, cantors, the list goes on and on and on. So anyhow, that was great. I uh, really welcome Vatican II. Some people had a tough time in it, with it. Some of the pastors I were with, they loved the way it was in Latin. And of course, we all loved it, I guess, at that time, but the mass faces of the people and uh, in English was very meaningful, very meaningful. And then opening up the scriptures was huge, huge. It said in uh, the Constitution and the liturgy, the treasures of the Bible are to be op opened up more lavishly so that a richer fare will be made available to the people at the table of the word, right here, the table of the word, and a great emphasis on the scriptures. And then a cycle for three years, not the same reading every Sunday, uh, year after year, That'd be, uh, and so on and so forth. I could go on and on. Some other time, we have more time, we'll, we'll talk about that. But anyhow, scriptures was a huge, huge, huge. As you know, that many people are in scripture groups here at Sacred Heart. It's a small group sharing. That's fantastic. That's going on here for years. And that's a good thing. And many people have the scriptures as a basis of their faith life and prayer life. And I think most of the people here have the Magnificat. They get great, great nourishment in God's word. The end of the first reading today says, St. Paul tells us today that all scripture is inspired by God. It's spirit-filled, spirit-filled. And it's useful for teaching for approving, for correction, and for training in holiness. For training in holiness. That's beautiful. God's word is really very, very, very special. And then there's a greater balance between the liturgy of the word and the liturgy of the Eucharist. The big thing when I was growing up was mass, consecration, holy communion. That was it. Uh, nothing about the word, hardly. But since Vatican II, there's a tremendous balance between liturgy of the word and liturgy of the Eucharist. Jesus is present in the word. He's present in the word. He speaks to you and me, personally. The word of God nourishes us for service in the community and in our families and elsewhere as the, word, the body and blood of Christ here at the altar were nourished by word and sacrament. And that's a great, great blessing. It's great that you follow, that you follow the Mass and Life streaming every day. And we're delighted, absolutely delighted, Father Mike and I, that you'll be right in front of us on Monday for daily Mass. And then again, on the Feast of Corpus Christi, what a big, great time, you know, for a Saturday evening Mass and the Sunday morning Masses. We're really and truly looking forward to have you here in the church. We miss you. And I know you miss here being in church. But God's gifts are great. It's all gifts. It's all blessing. It's all grace. Let us lift our minds and hearts now to God our Father as we pray for all church leaders that they may lead the church in these difficult times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders that they might work together for an end to racial division 
and strive to provide peace and justice for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Manuel and Raymond, who will be ordained priests today at the Immaculata, for the Diocese of San Diego, two candidates for ordination. I, I believe that's at 5 p.m. this evening. At the Immaculata, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For John Roberts, who's here with us this morning, his last time as a layman, uh, in a sense, uh, serving Mass, he'll be an ordained permanent deacon on Saturday at uh, 10 o'clock at the Immaculata. We pray for John and his classmates that they may be filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eighth graders of Sacred Heart Parish School as they graduate this year, that God will bless them abundantly in the days and weeks and months ahead and years ahead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all my classmates who were ordained 60 years ago today, both living and deceased, and for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from the coronavirus and all those helping them in so many different ways, and for peace in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the New Heart family for whom this Mass is being celebrated in particular, and for all of our own special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now we lift up our prayers and petitions and also those still unspoken and offer them to the Father, true Mary. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, the Lord is with you. you. Blessed, blessed art thou among, among women, women and, and blessed, blessed is the fruit, is the fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now and at the, the hour, hour of our death. death. Amen. Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, richer than gold, stronger than death. Your words are spirit and life, O Lord, life everlasting. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom but by your providence are ever 
even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people, Israel, through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim way in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom, through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O oh God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, son now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most holy, we ask you now to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Lord, we, with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love. We may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. 
So having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters, Ed McVaney, the deceased priest of Father Sheehan's class, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and followed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray. From every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
prepare for spiritual communion. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. My Jesus, breathe in me as you once breathed on your disciples. Open everything blocked in me to receive your Holy Spirit more fully, more deeply. Come, Holy Spirit. I want to receive you into my soul. I long to come to you as a table of the Eucharist, for I believe you are truly present by the power of the Holy Spirit in the most holy sacrament. But since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, for I embrace you and I unite myself wholly to you. Veni Sancte Spiritus. Never let me be separated from you. Keep me safe in your sacred heart. Amen. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table where saints and sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the A feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Stand and pray. For the glory of your name, O Lord, I have joyfully celebrated the mystery of faith. To mark the anniversary of my priestly ordination, so that I may be in truth what I have handled mystically in this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, John, would you like to come over here near the ambo? We'd like now for everybody to extend your hands towards John and Father Mike and I will give him a blessing. <coughs> you can put out your hands, John, you're receiving God's gifts and blessings. John, God loves you infinitely. That will never change. Your wife, Maria, loves you. Your children, Matthew and Mary and Lizzie and your extended family. And the priests, deacons and people of Sacred Heart Parish community love you. As Bishop McElroy places his hands on your head today, we pray that you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit so that you may be of wonderful service 
the Sacred Heart Parish community and beyond. I'd like Father Mike to add a prayer. Father, Father in heaven, fill him with your spirit that he may strive to continue to grow in holiness, to be a holy deacon, to minister your people with love and service and selflessness, and always, Lord, enjoy that he is doing your work and accomplishing your will here on earth. We ask all of these blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's show, show John our appreciation. All right, John. I wish you well, John, at the ordination, which is tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock at the Immaculata. And the ordinations today are at 5 p.m. at the Immaculata. So thank everybody for helping here this morning. Make it a great day. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, radiating the joy of the gospel. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hail, Holy Queen. Hail.